All right. So here I have the website for the software I mentioned a couple times tonight called uh, Foundry VTT, Foundry Virtual Tabletop. It's like, we're gonna be taking a look at it for a little while. It's not my first look. I've already <laughs> impulsively spent a lot of time setting it up, taking a look through it, installing mods, um, which is one very, very big positive about this is that it's very mod friendly, um, which is like kind of true of Roll20. I have no reference no point of reference for Fantasy Grounds. I've like spent zero amount of time in that software. But this is very moddable. It has a lot of mods already, and it's not even technically released. It's like, uh, right now to get access to this, you have to pay on a Patreon. Let's, let's pause. Let's get the music up so I can pause it. <laughs> there are some music features that we're going to be looking at. Um, so yeah. It's being released for sale soon, and like I said, I think it's going to be like $10 to buy, and only the GM has to buy it. Uh, it's hosted on your computer, the GM, like Fantasy Grounds, but they have partners already to like host it for you. So you can get like a private server for about the same price as Roll20. That gives you like space to upload stuff and, um, you know, set up your, set up your campaign there. See, I probably should have delayed until Cam came back. I'm, I especially want to get his perspective on a lot of this, but that's fine. That's fine. He'll come soon enough. Maybe. <laughs> so. So. I'm going to pause the music, and we're just going to go into the demo so I can show off some of the stuff. So, like, this is what it looks like when you're kind of, um... When you're joining as a player, you type in an access key, which I think is Foundry for this. Yeah, just Foundry. Anyone can come here and check out the demo right now. It's like up for the public. Um, let's 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 pick Mari. I think she's who I was clicking around last time. No, don't save that password. So yeah. So this is what the tabletop looks like. It's like pretty similar layout to Roll20. You've got your, like, tools and options up here. You have your maps along the top. You'll notice that as a player, I can click between maps. So that's cool. Like, multiple are accessible to me at any given time. Chat's over here. Your rolls are here. Very familiar. Um, same, like, across the top. You have your combat tracker, your jukebox, all that. We'll probably go into that more later. Let me see. How do I... So you can hear right now, it's got like, it's got sounds built in, which I like. And you can just move around. It's got the dynamic lighting with like the fading light. It's extremely refined. Their interface is great. Um, how do I, there's a way to spin. All right, shift, shift in like the arrow keys or WASD lets you spin your character. So like, if you happen to be playing with a cone of sight or if you just care about which way your character is facing, you can do it that way. And like, yeah. So, right now mostly looks like it has most of the good stuff from Mold 20. It also has this thing where you can like, you can right click to bring up a HUD with any, any token you click on. Like the one you, oh, for, yeah. Maybe I can't, okay, there we go. You could do things like target an enemy, and then like roll an ability and it'll automatically try to calculate, I think. And it's got like built-in 5th edition support. Okay, maybe. I haven't tested this too much on the demo, I don't know like how much of it is set up, but like you have this tar target interface, and if it's set up right, you can like attack. Um, I guess I rolled poorly. It is. Part of the thing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if the GM has it enabled, then it'll automatically like deduct from their life and let the GM know if it's hit or not. Um, like it's got the smooth animations. You can like, you can do things like measure out a path and then like 
have it move your token for you, which I think is very cool. You'll notice that I think this is a new sound effect. There's a thing you can do. Is this browser as well? Yeah, I'm connected through browser to a server. So um, it's not 100% browser based. The GM has to be running the software on their computer or on a private server, but the players can all join from their browser. Um, more baddies in here. You can see, you can like, I think the outline shows what their, uh, can I select multiple targets? I'm still kind of figuring things out, but at the very least, yeah, you can designate targets for your for your spells. And you have like your macros and attacks down here. Can I bring up the character sheet? Yeah. Bring up the character sheet just by double clicking the tokens, which I think you can do in Roll22. <laughs> it's like just not something I've done. <laughs> um, so and you have all your rolls here. All of your stats and everything. You have your inventory somewhere. They have a lot of drag and drop functionality. So, like, if I could find my inventory, which maybe these character sheets, maybe this sheet. Oh, it's right here. Okay, sweet. So, like, I think you can kind of like drag things in and out. I guess stuff that doesn't have tokens, you can't like drag onto the map. Although that would be that would be cool. But if have uh, this is journal. They don't have any public items. Oh yeah, they do. So like, here's a list of items that are available to me. I think I can just drag and drop them into my inventory. Yeah. So I now have an alchemical alchemy jug. I have an alms box, etc. I think the same is true of features and spells. So, yeah. Very neat, very neat. Um, and there's like, I'll show it later, but there's like uh, free Pathfinder support as well. I think it's community-based support. I think, yeah, that's the end of the road there. Let's see if I can kind of just finish exploring this map. Um, it's a little kinder than Roll20 when you try to like go through a wall or something. It like gives you some some feedback of like, can't do that. <laughs> Although it's a little confusing because there are walls, there are types of walls you can move through and I don't think they're very distinct on the player's end. You just have to kind of try. <laughs> oh, this is a cool thing. This might be a thing in Fantasy Grounds, I don't know. But in Roll20, doors are like the bane of my existence as a, as a DM. Like, if there's a line of sight blocker across a door, I have to, like, click it and manually, like, drag it to, um... Let's see if I... Uh, I probably should have already locked in. <laughs> gotten this ready. But that's fine. Let's, uh, show off some, some counter examples. Just draws red lines and then, yeah. Yeah, erases it for doors. It is terrible. <laughs> it's true. It's lacking support for sure. Um, let me... This is the one. We'll be using this as an example later in VTT. But, yeah. Like you're saying, most of the time you have to either, like, click and drag it out of the way, you have to delete it, or, like, um, sometimes I'll be able to... What the... I can't actually even find it. <laughs> Sometimes I'll like swing it out of the way, but I don't even see the extra box like to adjust the angle here. So, <laughs> you know, do any of them have it? I don't know why, but I don't have that option on these boxes. So that's fine. Uh, so yeah, doors, great. I don't know if they have an example in this area, but you can also lock doors as the GM. And then when the player tries to click on it, like the door will still show up. But they'll, uh, it, that's, this is a generic. It's fine. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry, Moto. You're right, you're right. I totally have arc spoilers up. That's wrong. That's my bad, that's my bad. No arc spoilers. You're fine. If you're still there, please don't go away. Uh, yeah, you can lock the doors, and if the player comes up and they click on it, it'll, like, make a little, like, sound, and they won't be able to go through. So it's, it's wonderful. I really like the flavor of it. Well, once again, I'm going to try, I'm just going to, 
try to turn undead here. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I still haven't tested the in-combat stuff very much. Um, oozes. Uh, you have things... Do I have the option here? No. If you enable it, you can, like, have just built-in um, templates. So I could, like, drop a circle to see, you know, how many of these guys I could hit. And it's... It even has, like, a thing where it'll highlight the squares. So that's very neat. I'll show that off later. Hello, rats. Maybe I'll... Maybe I'll jump. I think... Wow, this is big. It's pretty big. Pretty big map. <laughs> Can I just... Nope. Okay. It's a little stingy about not letting you go through walls. But in general, it performs really well compared to, like, a Roll20 map of this size, I would say. And again, no, uh, no comparison for Fantasy Grounds. I don't think there's too much else surprising in the sewer. We'll move on. Um, what's Blood Grotto look like? Okay, this is just the overworld map, so we'll... I haven't seen a... Uh, yeah, just a little outline where the party is. I haven't looked at this map too much. Oh, there's a party character sheet. That's cool. Party caravan. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be the common... Um, the common uh, opinion is that Fantasy Grounds is about, like, the versatility. But I kind of think, so far, I kind of think this software, like, beats Fantasy Grounds in versatility, too. It might take some JavaScript. But I think it does. Um, one thing you don't see here, you can put like journal pins on this map and like click into them and it's great. Uh, obviously can't show that off. All I can show off is the party character sheet, <laughs> which is really just a token. Um, logging camp. I think the tavern has most of what I want to show off. Why am I still hearing the sewers? Let me see. That's fine. Yeah, the lighting is neat. Like, right here, my character doesn't have any lighting. There's just, like, a torch and a campfire. And it's, like, softer and a little more... I guess I have, like, low light. I, it's a little more gentle and, uh... You know, looks good. That's what I'm saying. Looks good. I think that's most of what this is showing off. Um, it would be cool if it showed... Oops. It'd be cool if it showed off the terrain lighting. Oh, it does. Uh, maybe it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Okay. So, anyone who's used Roll20, you'll be probably familiar with a common problem where, like, if you outline this block uh, with line of sight blockers, like, you can't see you inside of it. And then, if you want this to be a line of sight blocker, basically the, the common advice is to just draw an X through it so you can still see kind of the top of it, um, but you don't see through it. So, like, right, I'd see only this slice, right? Here, they have something called a terrain wall, where if you box all of this, you can see through one wall, but you can't see through the second wall. And it's still, I don't think it, yeah. It still acts as a wall, so I can't move through it, but I can see that this is like a tower. I can see, I can see people on the tower. I just can't see through the tower. So it's a little more versatile. Oh, and there's like, there's a terrain wall here that just like, an invisible wall that just prevents me from falling down the cliff, cliff to my death. Um, so it's just like, it's got a lot of tools. If the, Anytime I've been like, boy, I wish Roll20 could do this thing. Like it has kind of all of those things that I've ever, ever said. <laughs> There's more of the terrain blockers. Um, so I think, I think that's, yeah. If we go to the tavern. Here is the, it auto, you know, starts auto playing music, but I believe if I go outside, yeah, I go outside. I don't hear that music. Um, it's like zoned sounds. So you can set like a limit to how far the sounds go. The people talking just disappeared too. 
If I like move up to the door. Oh, I thought the talking would come back. Alright, there's a place. The sound is also blocked by a door, so you can like set up a sound area. And then like close the door and you won't hear the sound anymore. I'm gonna try to find that. This is blocked by the wall. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I got lost with what I was trying to say. I already showed off that the door blocks sound. Yeah. You can also, like, you're setting a radius, too. So it's not just walls. It's like if you're a certain amount of distance away, it won't play. So, yeah. So, yeah. I think it's very cool. You can tell it's, like, a little faded here. Louder in the middle. As someone who uses, like, sounds and soundtracks in my games a lot, it's very neat. It's also, like, blocked by, uh, blocked by walls and corners, not just doors. There's that locked door sound. So good. I will, uh, try to spiritual weapon him. Oh, no available spell slot? Wow, it attracts spell slots. <laughs> I didn't even know that. But it tracks your spell slots. That's great. <laughs> Why am I rolling that? I don't know. That's fine. Okay, moving on. Very neat. All very neat. So, yeah. Yeah. I kind of think that's most of what... Most of what I want to show off in the demo. Um... There's like a, yeah. Oh, this is kind of where, okay. This is where I most noticed the door sound thing. Cause like, although it's a little slow right now. I wonder if the demo server is getting like hit a lot, but the sound loading, the sound's acting a little buggy. But yeah, the sound interactions are cool. Oh, could I, uh, yeah. All right, I think that's it for the demo. Um, here we have, this is kind of cool. <laughs> this is my campaign imported from Roll20 using some like scraping and importing software. So I can like show off some examples of stuff. So like that same, let me see. Tallowtown. So that same map we were just looking at in Roll20, where, like, you know, I have to, like, fiddle with these doors, move them out of the way, whatever. Like, just importing them in, and the fact that these are colored with different colors, like, these are obviously walls, these are doors. They're already drawn as doors in Foundry after, like, the import. I think that's <laughs> really cool. And to be clear, the import is not part of Foundry. That's like fan software. Um, but fan software that worked much better than I expected. <laughs> like to automatically detect that these are doors. I was very impressed. Very impressed. And like, you know, it's not detecting. There's a couple places where there's like gaps between windows. It's not detecting these smaller segments as doors. So it's not, you know, someone worked pretty hard. I worked pretty hard to make sure that that like works. Uh, as well as possible. Yeah. Um, it didn't convert all of the character sheets because they're Pathfinder 2e character sheets. The importer was designed for 5e. So like if if my players and I move to this, let's, uh, let's just activate this map and move into it um, online, move around as the character. If we switch to this, my players would have to make remake their character sheets just because the importer doesn't account for Pathfinder 2. But not a huge deal. And like not a knock on the software, obviously. Like importing maps works really well. Just like scraping them from the website and pulling them in. Like I, I couldn't ask for any, any better than this. Um, I guess one thing, one thing I ran into, I don't know if it's gonna, I don't know if it's a thing here. These are all tokens, right? 
Some monsters were imported as tiles, like background stuff, instead of tokens. So that's one thing, one issue. Not a big issue, but an issue. Um, and, uh, yeah. Otherwise, everything was pretty smooth, really. Uh, the other thing, importing like directly from Roll20 like this, your macros aren't going to work. They're not in the right code. <laughs> Nothing they can do about that. <laughs> so like I, I have to, all of these like templates I use, these role templates I use to run my game, um, I would have to, uh, I have to remake these and I'll be playing around to do that. Um, I might like, let me just show some of these off a little bit. I've shown these on stream before, but these are, put a lot, put a lot of work into these. So like, I don't expect, I just hit a button down here and it like brings up a card with sub options. Like there's a role combined with, all right, now I have other tables I can click on. And it like, it's kind of nested stuff like this for a lot of my stuff, like watch checks, like multi, a lot of multi roles and like multi tables in one button. So that'll be some work to uh, get going in Foundry. Probably not an issue for other people so much, I would say. Probably more of a me thing, <laughs> but That'll take time to get used to, just like the new macro language. Uh, I've spent like no time at all looking at that for Foundry, but I know it's there. I just don't know how it works yet. I wonder if we can. Uh, maybe I should have. Let's bring that demo back. Let's see if it'll see if it'll show me how to make macros. I have a feeling that they're all like dragged and dropped. Edit. Oh, that's not. That's not too bad. It looks like JavaScript. Script global type script. Okay. Might be um, a little less accessible. I don't even know if that's true. So like these scripts are gonna be a little less accessible than Roll20 macros, but like you have this chat script option. I'm not gonna save this, I don't wanna fuck with their demo. <laughs> but uh, you have a chat, chat script option, so like, Presumably, you can do stuff like, you know, roll 1D or let's roll 46 if you want. Like, I should edit these in my game so I can actually show them off. But you can do stuff like that to just like macro chat commands together. And that might do a lot of what I want to do in terms of like rolling encounter tables and like NPC generation all together, just bringing multiple tables into one command. Like, chat macros will probably handle a lot of that. And then like the advanced advanced scripting uh, can be, like a lot of people might not have to touch that at all. <clears throat> all right, let's close that again. <laughs> so yeah, what else? I don't wanna show off actual spoiler maps, but the other thing, The other thing that happened is I, there was, this took a lot of work. Um, all right, good night, Kami. Thank you for hanging out all night. That was, that was great. Hopefully you, you know, I'll probably, I'll probably catch you when you're getting up for work, but have a good night, sleep well. Uh, yeah. So this map in particular was kind of a nightmare. It didn't port over at all. Basically, hexes are a pain. Hexes are the worst. Like, there's, <laughs> there are two ways to measure hexes. You can measure like wall to wall, like this, top to bottom in, in this case, or you can measure like tip to tip. And everyone seems to measure hexes differently. And then like, even if you're not measuring them differently, you still have to draw this diagonal line. And drawing a diagonal line with like, square pixels, you're going to have to do some sort of rounding to make sure that this line is approximately the same length as this line. Same with all the diagonals. And so like every software is going to make a decision about how to round this. And that software might not, or that decision might not be the same. So like you get down here and it's just, it's off. Like it's off by 
less than an entire hex, but it's off. <laughs> and I fiddled around with, like, the grid size. I set it to, like, 80... You can do things like setting it to 80.5 to try to nudge its rounding up a little bit. And so I tried things like 8.25, 8.5, 8.9, 8.99999, .9 and like all of that was too small. And then 81, all of those previous numbers should have started with an 80, not an 8. <laughs> 81 is just too big, just slightly too big. Um, so it's off a little bit. Um, and it's not off by enough. Like, I would have, uh, you know, I would have stuck with this. I would have been fine with this if, like, you know, this is, this is close enough to accurate that I wouldn't have minded. But there's no way to label hexes in Foundry right now. <laughs> so, like, I can't match this up to my key. Uh, uh let, let me clarify a little bit, shall I? So... I didn't start with this gridded version. I started with just a, oof, oof, relax. Started with this map, blank, and like just trying to put the hexes on here, trying to get it to work, uh, line up closely with roll 20. And I got it, I got it to what we see here. But there are no labels. There's no way to turn on hex labels right now, so no way to match things up to my key. It's just not usable. So <laughs> I had to export it from Roll20. I had to like, again, kind of scrape this out with the hex labels. These are Roll20 hexes, Roll20 labels. And uh, try to match up the grid as best I can. So that's what I did. Got to this. Played around with, uh, with the grid size a bunch and then like, two hours. Two hours I played with the grid size and moving the map around and trying to get it to line up. And then I was like, you know what? Alright, so we can't bend the grid to our will. We can just... We got this close, we can just stretch the map. And I took a guess. <laughs> took some pretty good guesses of, like... I was like, okay, you know, it's... It's, like, a little too... It's, it's a little too far down by, like, a little less than a third of a hex. We'll try 28-20. And it's over by a very small amount, like a very small amount to the right. I was like, well, 2805. And it just lined up perfectly. <laughs> like, just two hours of work trying to get the grid to line up, and then like 20 seconds of guesses on stretching the image, and it's perfect. <laughs> so, like, obviously, that's gonna result in some artifacts, but like, you can't. You're already zooming in and out all over the place on this. Like, it's it's fine. It's fine. It works. Works just fine. So, yep. That that takes care of it. I don't know. So now, uh, now it lines up with my labels. And I don't have to, like, I don't have to redo my key. I don't have to redo my labels. I don't have to find other software to label it. Yeah. Yeah. So, if I had to run this in Foundry today, this would have worked. And so I was very happy with that. Very, very happy with that. Just need a line of sight blocker to... It looks it looks better. It looks better in Roll20 than it does here. <laughs> I can find it. You know. You know. You can kind of use the edge of the map to, like, hide those, like, really janky corners. But it's fine. So, yeah. Got that, uh, got that sorted out. I'm, like... Yeah, just really, really happy with how easy it was to move everything over, to be honest. And, like, that aside, that aside, you can do things in here, like, these are all D&D &D monsters, or, the, you know, these, these didn't hook up with character sheets correctly, that's fine. What you can do, it has, like, all of the compendium stuff for Pathfinder already in here, and I, like... I almost wonder how legal that is. <laughs> like, I don't know, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know. But you can just go into the bestiary and like drag it out and like, bam, there's a there's a golden dragon with a token and a statue and it's done, it's there. I don't know if you can do that in Roll20 yet. I think I have a bestiary. 
Maybe I don't, uh... I guess I didn't buy the bestiary for roll 20. I just bought the, just bought the, um, core rule book. So, as things like feats and stuff and spells and you can, like, drag and drop those onto the character sheet, that does work in roll 20 now, but can't test this to see how good, <laughs> how well it sets up the character sheet and stuff, because I would have to buy the bestiary for, like, I don't know, 30 $40 or something, $60? I don't even know what it is. Um, so I don't have the... Yeah, I don't know. And, uh, either way, I think it would be... I, I would be impressed if it was as slick as this for Roll20. Like, this is really good. <clears throat> so that's, that's pretty nice. It's got, like, all of the journal stuff. Uh... If I can find it... <laughs> journal entries. So, has my journals, the uh, journal entries in the right folders, in the right order, even. Um, I think, you know, I don't actually know. Let's test something, shall we? I mean, here is a player. Let's look at Found at Burning Man. Oh, so this is a, this is a part that's kind of an issue, I guess. It imported the GM notes as visible to the players. So, like, that's, that would be problematic. If you wanted to just port it over and run a game with like no extra prep, um, so that's unfortunate, but not a big deal. It, um, yeah, if you're not prepared for that, that 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 could be rough. But knowing that ahead of time, like you've got time to set up for it, presumably it's you know not not the worst thing to have to like treat some of those journal entries or like use Roll20 for the old journal entries and add new ones in here. It imported all of my music in the right playlists, in the right order, with the correct replay settings. <laughs> I kind of lost it when I saw that. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's that's some attention to detail. Like, for a fan-made software to rip all this stuff down and like put it in the database correctly, I was impressed with that. Welcome back, Moto. You, you may have, but at least you have Nuggies. So yeah. Pulled these in. It's great. It's got all the same options as Roll20, probably more. You can, like, switch the playlists to Shuffle, switch them to Play All at Once, which probably not a good idea on the Blaze Blue soundtrack. <laughs> but you can, like, set a scene to simul play, you know? Um, soundboard only, I think, is like a, you just click it once and it plays out. My, oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Is this a thing that unironically happened? <laughs> Did someone break into your house for toilet paper? Because that would be that would be pretty unfortunate. It's got the sequential playback straight through. You know, all the usual options there. So that's great. That's nice. Um, I was very happy to see that because... I put a lot of work into just, like, the soundtrack stuff, the playlists. I was very happy. Very, very happy with that. Um, no stores have anything. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna wait a good two weeks until I do any grocery shopping. So, like... You're not gonna get what you want right now. <laughs> People have bought 20 of what you want for no reason. Except milk. No, actually, also milk. <laughs> so dumb. Also, it's wild how much has changed about just general public situation <laughs> since the last time I streamed. Like, it's been a week in terms of... Moving on. Moving on. Um, let's see. What else can we play with here? Can I just drag a condition onto a dude? Not really. That would have been neat. That would have been impressive. But, you know, all this stuff. Don't have to set up any roles in here. I don't think you just kind of... Uh, hit it. Oh, and I have a thing. I have a mod that, like, pops a bubble up above whoever's doing an attack roll. I have so many mods already. I spent a ton of time yesterday just looking up mods. Let's go to my... Let's go to my mod list. 
Manage modules. These are all custom mods. I have a time mod. I have a bubble roll mod, which is what you just saw, where it rolled above his head and, like, moved the camera. I have a calendar mod, which shows up shows up down here. It's a little weird, because it's got, like, a real-time thing. They have to pause. It, like, counts the actual seconds, and I'm like, uh... uh I don't care about that. No. We're not going to be playing on this tomorrow. It's going to take more setup than that, but I'm... If I start running, like, a West Marches thing, if I start running another game, it'll probably be in this. And we might eventually convert to this once it's, like, actually released. Um. But, yeah, not not soon, I would say. Not for, uh, not for our current campaign. Unless you guys, like, really, really wanted to. Because, like, I would be, I would be down to put in the work, but we'd have to, like, spend a weekend on it. Or, like, skip a week. I don't know. I don't know. We'd have to we'd have to put in some work like as a group to get it done. Cuz we'd have to like You might have missed this part, but the character sheets didn't port over, didn't get like stripped down. Um cuz like the converter assumes 5th edition. So So yeah. Need to manually move over the character sheets and stuff. Um not the biggest deal, but it's a thing. Let's see. So, yeah, calendar weather system, like I mentioned. Oh, yeah, the weather system. So if I, like, it's supposed to have extra options here. Oh, yeah, it's just hidden, kind of. But you can advance by, like, one minute, five, in the calendar mod. Um, you can advance by one minute, five minute, 15 minutes over here, which I wish was 10 minutes as a Pathfinder player. Like, 15 minutes isn't an interval for anything. 10 minutes is the interval for every single post-combat thing. So like I kind of wish, kind of wish that was different, but not hard to hit the five minute button twice. There's like an hour you can advance to like midnight or seven a.m. the next day. Um, you know, it's not not very understanding of people who get up at different times, but that's fine. You can like add events and seasons and stuff. It's very cool. Very cool little compact mod has a weather thing built in. Uh, chat auto loader just makes it so like it it grabs the first bit of chat and then loads more as you scroll up makes it lighter combat utility belt adds combat utility <laughs> stuff i haven't delved too deeply cursor hider is an interesting thing you can see you can see here i can see where helios is pointing if i alt tab out uh helios can see where i'm pointing as a gm if i'm like moving around in hidden token land maybe i want to like turn that off and i don't uh remember i don't remember how <laughs> i don't remember how to do that but there's a mod that lets me if i can figure it out uh it's supposed to be like a button somewhere down here but i don't see it so it's possible that it needs to be updated but i will be you know probably using that uh this is just like a bunch of extra stuff um the furnace just had it's like a general like quality of life thing um so like it adds this now playing uh thing up here if i hit play on something so like you can just pause it easily that this is a nice little <laughs> nice functionality i would miss that if that wasn't there but fortunately this mod already adds it um weather effects are nice i guess It go. I don't know why I can't bring it up right now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Just the usual, you can do, like, fog and rain and, like, cinders and stuff. I'll try to show that in a minute. Um, so there's, like, a lot of utility stuff here. This just lets players upload stuff as long as the GM is connected. Uh, this lets me easily see what people have permission to. I can see that, like, all players can see my explicative defy list journal entry. Uh, pings. Copy a thing from Roll20 <laughs> that I appreciate. <laughs> Being able to ping is nice. Not having to draw with the, uh, uh, the ruler. Grid scale menu helps you, like, line up the grid better. I used it with the hex grid. <laughs> As I talked about before, Playlist Importer lets you, like, bulk import music 
which I didn't actually use. Didn't have to use it to get my music in here. I just used the um, the external tool I mentioned. But we'll use it from here on. Search anywhere. Let's see. None of these are working. When I like, I was I just tested all these last night. All right, Tychus. I thought it was control space to search anywhere, but I can't bring it up, so. That's fine. That's what it's supposed to do. I'll have to look up the hotkey. Uh, that's, that's basically it. That would have just let me search for, like, items and stuff. In the compendium, like, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff in here, a lot of different folders. Control, like, the, the hotkey for it is supposed to allow me to um, search all the folders at once. So I can just search dragon and have all of the feats, all the bestiary entries, all the items related to dragons. SVG loader lets you roll, lets you load stuff from Dungeon Fog, which I use pretty regularly. On Dungeon Fog, you can, like, generate a line of sight map. SVG loader lets you load that data. So, like, you can just match it up without having to hand draw it here. Uh, and Tiles Browser, just like any time you're importing an image, any time you're importing an image, you can like preview. Preview the image you're look. oh my gosh, come on. Preview the image you're looking for. So if I like go into here, I wanna change the image, click this, you know, it shows me, shows me a little preview here. This isn't like a built-in part of the software. So, so that's nice. Those are all the all my custom mods, but point being, tons of extra utility by being able to like load in custom mods, create your own, and like unlike other uh, tabletops, like people can just solve the problems on their own if it's like able to be solved by a mod. So you can see there's already a lot of problems, like the calendar thing, the grid alignment thing, like solved by mods. So. If someone doesn't like the way something works, they can just make a mod to fix it. You don't have to wait for Roll20 to develop folders for <laughs> your maps. You can just already put them into folders if you make a mod for it. But also, I think you just, I think they just literally, they literally just have scene folders. <laughs> so, both. Um, there's a lot of stuff with the combat tracker. Like, okay, I'm not going to be able to show this off correctly right now. But like if you click into a token and you like add them to the tracker, like you, you toggle this to signify that they are in combat. And then you can just hit the roll for their initiative and it'll grab the initiative roll from their character sheet and roll it. Right now it's just probably gonna roll a flat 20. Yep. You just click on, click on down the line. Um, yeah, and you can like sort it. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. But yeah, <laughs> roll all, so you can just jump. Like, add everyone to combat, hit roll all, initiative's done. You don't have to, um, you know, don't have to roll initiative one by one with the macros, don't have to click between the tokens. You just, like, turn the token on, you roll the initiative, and then you go. So that will save a ton of time. There's also an option to just roll NPCs if you want to let player rolls, players roll their own initiative. Uh, I don't know how to start the encounter... Being in combat, wouldn't you know it? So then you like you can click through the initiative order, it strikes them off, and then it starts the next round, which also should increment the round the time down here by six seconds. <laughs> so that's pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. There are chat commands to set up. If you have these mods installed, there are chat chat commands to be like, all right, when a minute passes, get rid of my bless. Things like that. I don't know what they are. But if I were using them all the time, I would. So I'm just going to tell you that they exist. <laughs> oh, like I mentioned, as a player, you or as a GM, you're supposed to be able to lock these. Um, some of my controls are a little weird right now. Oh, there you go. Okay, they have to be closed for you to lock them. Obviously, obviously, you can't lock an open door. So now, now we get that lovely sound. So that's great. That's very nice. Um. Just lock everything. Lock the whole town. Lock the whole town. I'm going to forget about this, and then we're gonna actually going to play this map in, like, years. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, what the? Why is literally everything locked? 
Um, anyway, so, so, I don't know, what else is there? The, like, you have the decks and the rollable tables. My decks are not, like, I don't know. These imported straight from, uh, straight from Roll20, so I think I can just, like, I don't know how to roll these. Weight one. Okay, so it can go by weight or by... Interesting. It can go by weight or by range. I think it will auto-calculate the range. So if I just do like 21, no. Nope, it didn't, <laughs> didn't do it. <laughs> I thought I was gonna look really smart there. Um, normalize result weights. Uh, I'm scared of that button. Does that just, oh no. Okay, so if you hit this, it'll adjust the range. Um, what happens if I adjust this to 46? Okay, it adjusts the range based on the weight, so. Uh, and then you can like lock it? What does the lock do? Nothing? <laughs> All right, I don't know what that does. I don't know what that does. Toggle drawn stat, oh, it doesn't, okay. Something else, something else, that's fine. Um, draw with replacement, I don't know what that means. And I don't, uh, yeah, all right. But once you're in here, you can roll it. Oh, neat, okay. <laughs> so I wonder, there's probably a command to roll these tables and I just don't know what it is, but it's one thing I will figure out, is like the chat commands and stuff. Because, yeah. Um, for the folks who are still here, y'all have any, uh, any questions about, like, anything I can show off about this? Any burning curiosities about its capabilities? Um, well, I find more music. No, you're just sad? Oh, no! Uh, just because we're not going to be using it? Metroid Mix. That's what we'll go with. So we'll go with, yeah, I mean, that's fair. <laughs> it's really spiffy, but to be fair as well, connecting to my computer would probably be a pain in the ass right now. I, I don't have the setup. Um, sounds good, Teddy. Thank you for hanging out and thank you for the raid. I will, uh, I'll catch you soon. I will try to like, just so you're aware. And this is really easy to say in hindsight. I almost like it was a toss up, a toss up between playing Path of Exile and streaming it, or just like hanging out in your stream before I started my Pathfinder stuff. <laughs> so I do intend to hang out in other people's streams sometime. I just tend to be napping before my stream when it, all of my friends stream. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> one day, one day I'll catch it. Anyway, I hope you have a good night. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Fancy. But yeah, Modo. Right now, to set this up, there like I have to set up port forwarding and like an SSL certificate and like a, a whole bunch of stuff. So like, it's actually not the easiest to set up on your own without like a, a dedicated hosting solution, which I can set up, but that'll also take a little bit of time. So just know. Just no moto. That it would probably be a pain in the ass for everyone to use right now. Um, I'm curious, moto. Like, it sounds like you would much prefer to play this here than uh, than on on roll twenty. So I'm curious what stands out as like a a plus here. That's fair, Teddy. Thank you. Uh, yeah, let's see. Like everything, literally everything else. Everything else basically imported the way, other than the world map, Moto, you were probably not. Uh, not there for when I was explaining this, but the hexes were all wildly off and like I couldn't get it to fit no matter what, so I just like 
stretched the image <laughs> to fit the hexes on on Foundry, because Rule 20 and Foundry just measure hexes differently. Diagonal lines are a pain in the ass. Just like how warm the light is. Also, it just seems much less Windows 98. That's fair. That's fair. Have, speaking of Windows 98, in my, like, adventure <laughs> of, like, looking at other virtual tabletops that people were suggesting, just, like, trying to expand my... My, uh... My experiences. I checked out this thing called Map Tool, and talk about Windows 98. <laughs> like, I don't want to trash on Map Tool, because apparently it's pretty powerful, but, like, oh boy, this interface is... Sure is Windows 98. But it's it's open source. It's open source and it's free, and it, like, allows for a, sh a ton of customization. And I... I saw Foundry and abandoned it. I, I was like, nope. <laughs> Not gonna deal with this. Like whatever, whatever customization I can do here, all the customization in Foundry is in JavaScript, and I know JavaScript a heck of a lot better than whatever this is in. So, sorry, Map Tool. Very cool though. It's been around for a long time, and it's like I said, it's free, but it doesn't have a jukebox. You have to host it on the DM's computer. Like, <laughs> you have to do a lot of work to make it pretty. This is just a much nicer, more direct. It doesn't do any work for you, right? Foundry does a lot of work for you. So. So I'm pretty, pretty cool, pretty happy with that. Um. Since Windows 98, yeah. <laughs> Closer to about 2010 is when it came out, I think. I'm pretty sure. So, I don't have a Pathfinder 2 character sheet, but, uh, no, you were around when I saw that you could, when I showed that you could, like, drag and drop stuff. Yeah, the actual music features seem more convenient for you? That's true. Like, mostly this is just the same as Roll20. Just, like, in a nicer interface? Like, <laughs> let's compare. <laughs> Wait at. There it at. Okay. Let's compare. This is the entire boss playlist in this nice box. It doesn't even take up the whole list. In Roll20, I have to scroll to see the entire boss playlist. <laughs> That's really the biggest difference. That's really the biggest difference right there. I have to scroll to see this playlist because this is taking, like, I would say this is three lines with, like, a lot of white space padding. And it doesn't make it more readable. It doesn't. It just doesn't make it more readable for it to be this spaced out. I understand, like, this entire line is for the name, and if it, like, this stuff was up here, then, like, the name would be crunched, but that's not an issue here, because the text is not a mile, you know, okay, fine. The text is not that much smaller here, but it's, like, this is so much more compact. There's so much, like, the spacing is in the right place. I don't know. Like, since the volume is just on pop-up, it doesn't matter if the name is long. Uh -oh. It's good. This is, this is really good. This was designed by... I think, by the way, that this is one person making all of this. So, like, just that fact has me mega impressed. <laughs> Whereas, like, Roll20... It, oh, oh. Yeah, I prefer black, uh, white on black instead of black on white, too. That's, that's a fair point. Roll20 is a bigger team. And it, it, it doesn't seem like the result is more progress. It seems like the result is less agile, bigger projects that take longer to come out. But, like, by the time they finish the bigger projects, like, this is already doing it right, you know? Um, and sure, that's because they're, like, having a, a public API that hooks into all of this, and, like, they have a store that's built in. They have a lot of, they do have stuff. They have advantages. And, like, technically, some of the stuff, like the chat commands and everything, it's, like, more accessible, more user-friendly. There's more documentation for Roll20. It's, like, a little easier to just touch and get into. You, you can just drag stuff onto the map, which is a big negative for Foundry, I think. Like, if I have a token, I can't just drag it onto a map. I have to, like, create, I have to go into the, um, 
Or should I go into the compendium or go into somewhere else? I have to go into actors, that's what it is. I have to go into here, I have to like make a new token and import the image. This wasn't even, this wasn't supposed to be a human, it was whatever. Um, that is probably gonna be a thing eventually though, right? I wanna say yes, but literally as I was checking the software out, I like searched for, searched through Discord to see if it's something that's ever been brought up. And there was, at the time I searched for it, a conversation going on between the developer and someone else where he just like didn't, didn't uh, didn't get what they were saying when they wanted to like dragon. He, he was pushing back basically. So like, yes, probably it'll eventually be a thing, either through a mod or through like the actual development of the thing. But um, you know, it doesn't seem like it's on his list because he didn't even he didn't understand why you would want to be able to just drag and drop a token and like make the character sheet from there. He's like, why why is that a thing? It's like, well. <laughs> Sometimes I just need like a certain look for a token. I just need to like throw this in here on the fly and I don't actually care what its stats are. I don't care what its skill in acrobatics is. I just need an image moving around the map <laughs> and like have my players roll to like hit it once and it dies or whatever. Like. His argument was, like, I don't know, it doesn't actually, like, save that much time. If you prep it, then it's, like, ready to go. Welcome, both Cam and Lady Midnight. Good timing there. Welcome back. Cam, I tried to... I tried to hold out for you to look over Foundry. And I, I kind of thought you would pop it. Yeah. Basically, I stopped holding out. I'm sorry. <laughs> but welcome. Foundry is the shit. And you're kind of coming in on the tail end of it. But it's baller. I'm just going to keep playing around with it while we're talking and you can absorb the stuff I've already mentioned. But yeah, Moto, to finish that, to finish that thought, probably it'll be, a, it'll be a thing where like you drag an image here and it automatically makes an actor out of it with like default stats or something. But right now, right now it's not a thing and it's not on the developer's mind really. Foundry is a virtual tabletop, much like Roll20 with like, just a beautiful interface, very usable tools. Like, so far the only complaint I have is this token thing that we're talking about where you can't just drag an image in like you can in Roll20 and you have to like make a thing first and then import the image from the perspective of like inside the token. It's like nested in a thing, in a thing. So there's more distance to getting a picture or a token onto the map. That is my only complaint versus Roll20 so far. Um, but like, meanwhile, I used a third party piece of software, like fan made software to import my entire like Pathfinder campaign from Roll20 and import it into Foundry. And it worked nearly flawlessly. It imported this map and it turned these crappy, uh, let's find it again. It turned these line of sight blockers here, like in the doors, it turned these into actual doors in the software that like the player can then go walk up to and open. <laughs> I'm most impressed by that. That's the most impressive thing. That's where, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm getting at. It turned your generic crappy line of sight blockers from Roll20 into like legit doors for a fan made piece of software, not developed by either of the developers. I did, you did what, what? That it like stripped all of my Roll20 campaign in here? Or that it automatically doored? <laughs> Cause I'm more fascinated by the second thing than the first thing. <laughs> that it automatically detected my doors. Yeah, that it did the, exactly! The doors, man. Yeah. And it's just because like, um, just the way it did it is like, this stuff is one color and it's big, and this stuff is another color and it's small. Like it's just common sense, but also like it didn't, you know, it didn't turn these like window gaps into doors. These are still line of sight blockers. I was very impressed. How much does Foundry cost? Foundry right now, it is not released. So you have to, you have to pay like $5 a month on the creator's Patreon to get it. 
or five dollars once to download it and then not get updates. <laughs> um, it will cost a one-time fee of ten dollars. I think it's ten dollars or five dollars. Five dollars for previous. It's ten dollars or less. Ten dollars or less to get Foundry, and so far I'm more impressed by Foundry than I am with Fantasy Grounds and its like hundred and fifty dollar for everything cost. I'm also more impressed with it than Roll20. But at least Roll20 has a warmer place in my heart than Fantasy Grounds. So so there's some forgiveness there. Roll20 was first. They didn't have an example of what people would want or need or complain about in 10 years. So like Roll20 gets some credit for outlining the basic features and then also putting it on the web, which like... Just the fact that Roll20 is on the web and my players can connect to it whenever they want makes it better than Fantasy Grounds by itself. And same like same with the fact that it has a jukebox. Roll20 could have had one feature or the other and been better than Fantasy Grounds for me. Since it has both, it's just not even a question. <laughs> um, I want Roll20 to do dark mode. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Other things that I want Roll20 to do is folders for this. <laughs> and like... Music that doesn't crap out and looks a little better and is a little more condensed. Again, uh, Cam, we were looking at, like, the music list, and just, like, this is so much nicer than this. Um, and it has things like... I can't... I don't have any examples here, so let's pull up... Anyone can do this. Anyone can go to the demo and play around. And I, like, highly recommend it. Let me just link it right now. Oh, maybe not. Um, it didn't put me to the login screen for the demo, but here is the website. And you can go into the demo, you can play around with, like, the doors and the line of sight features and, like, the macros. Um, but on top of just generally having a better sound interface, there's also a thing where I was like, pay attention as I walk around this corner. Sound place. Sound place as I walk around this corner. Sound is blocked by walls and by distance. Like you can set a, um, not always, like you can set a map wide sound or you can just play a sound. You can play a song. But you can also like drop a track in here, like playing from the middle and it spreads out and it's blocked by walls like light. And like if you're not in range of it, if you're not, like if something's blocking it, you don't hear the sound. It also has fading, so like as you get further away, this this map might not have it. Oh no, it did, right? If I go over here, much quieter. It's still there. Let me turn off Metroid for a minute. It's still there, and as you walk closer, it gets louder. It's so good. It's so, that's so good. And it's stuff that doesn't even matter to a lot of people, but since I use music and sound a lot, it's so good. Um, there's doors. We talked about the doors, right? I can walk over here. I can close the door. I can walk outside. I can close the door and it'll eventually turn off the music. Uh, there's there's the locked door sound that I keep harping on. Right? Walk over here. This door's locked. Can't open it up. But it, like, alerts the GM and potentially people inside that, like, the NPC, or the, the player character tried to open this door without without unlocking it, without being stealthy. And it's, like, kind of a more direct way, a direct method of play. <laughs> it's kind of a neat interaction. So, very cool. You have your macros down here, as usual. You can, like, double-click your character, you bring up the character sheet. I already showed it off that, like, you can um, bring up your character sheet and then just drag items in or feats. I'm, I have arrows now. I've added arrows <laughs> to my character sheet. Um, presumably, you could also, like, I think I can just, let me, let me try something. Let me bring up the journal. It's not going to let me put up a journal, is it? Maybe it. That's pretty. Okay, sorry, uh, Foundry, but 
Oh, they're not. Yeah. I think I can put items in journals is what I'm trying to say. I think I can throw an item in a journal, and then a player can pull the item out into their character sheet. So, like, I can make loot lists like I already do, and I can put the item in, I can put custom items in, and they can drag it into their character sheet. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else to show here. Oh, this shows off the nice lighting stuff very, very well. Um, like, it's got a very soft lighting. Um, might actually be dark on the preview a little bit. Yeah, it's fine. So, like, it's got softer shadows in general. It's got, like, invisible walls, so I can see over this, but it's not going to let me move through it and jump down the cliff. Um, the GM has to, like, move you. It's got terrain walls. You can see, as I move around this, that, like, it blocks the other side of the tower, but you can see the top of the tower still. It's called a terrain wall. So you can see there's a wall here and there's a wall here. There's a wall all the way around this, right? You can see through one wall and not the second one. It's something that people have been asking for on Roll20 for forever, and they just haven't done it. They're making steps to go that way, but better get there fast. <laughs> And to be fair, okay, this is made with technologies that weren't around when Roll20 was made, like the newer WebGL stuff and like newer lighting engines, newer graphics capabilities in browsers. So I can't fault Roll20 for not building it like this the first time because it wasn't there. <laughs> and Roll20 is now moving towards that. So like, oh yeah, yeah, the dim to, dim to bright is nice. Like this transition area is so good. All this is so good. It's all so good. I can! There. I'm not going to tell you what not to blame, blame Roll24. Yeah, like, they probably should have gotten to WebGL faster. They, they do have a, they have a lot of technical debt, and they're also not... They're not as agile as I think they necessarily should be. Um, but, you know, like, I kind of I kind of get it in a lot of cases. Like, especially this lighting stuff... They've had an existing lighting system, and they've been trying to implement and improve that rather than, like, pull it all out and put in a new system. So, I understand. It's just impressive that this single guy making this app is coming up with, like, all of the stuff people wanted by himself faster than Roll20 can, like, fix it and put it in. So, it is it is neat. It's, a, it's an accomplishment for sure. Oh, other thing. Little thing, but great thing. You can like measure out distances, obviously, and then you just press space to implement. This doesn't have, or I haven't found a way to do like waypoints. Also, I have a question for people who know fifth edition better than me. Did fifth edition, did fifth edition get rid of like the fourth edition way to draw diagonals? Because I just don't know. <laughs> like, is five fifteen correct? For this okay that's good the old diagonals the, like the fact that this was the same as this was dumb <laughs> yeah okay i'm i'm glad about that i'm glad they changed that good job dnd not that this is a new innovation fifth edition has been out for forever i just don't play it that often <laughs> Wait. Conflicting information. Hold on. 5e diagonals. Diagonal move. 5 feet or 10 feet of movement to go diagonally. Two comments. Base rules. Say it's 5 feet. If you're worried about realism, you can use the op. Okay, it's got optional rules for 515. Okay. Eh, that's fine. I guess. So base rules are always five, and it sounds like people mostly house rule the five, five, uh, yeah. Okay, that's fine. I just kind of wondered, because, like, <laughs> if you do the templates for, like, circle casts, it's, like, what you'd expect from Pathfinder, not that I can show you here. It's what you would expect from Pathfinder, not what you would expect from D&D. &D. 
where it's like, or fourth edition, whatever. I don't know. Moving on. <laughs> it was actually a circle, not a square, is my point. Um, let's show those off. Let's play with that. It's got, it's got these cool range templates that are just like a tool, so you can like throw out a cone. Oh, it doesn't, uh, it's not doing the square thing on the ground. Oh yeah, it does, after you're done drawing it. So that everything should be using hex... <laughs> the reality is that everything should be using hex grids for combat. You were not there for this. Neither of you were. So let me go over this again. When I imported my world map, my hexes, into here, here's the thing about hexes. Hexes suck to draw with square pixels. <laughs> no matter what you do, for the diagonals, you're going to be making an estimate, not an actual accurate pixel measurement. Like, this diagonal line is only about as long as this diagonal line. And so, you're always going to be doing some kind of rounding. And Roll20 and Foundry do not do the same type of rounding. When this is set to the baseline, the grid is off. <laughs> so, like, I spent a lot of time trying to mess with the grid, like, size to get this correct, but you can just tell that this is like, it's off by pixels, just barely anything left and right, and by quite a bit more up and down. Also, like, this is so close to correct. Like, this is as close as I could have gotten it. I went from like 80, I went from a grid size of 80.99999 to 81, and it went from too small to too big. <laughs> Not a lot you can do. So, you know, if, as I was saying before, if, like, if uh, Foundry had hex labels, I would have just gone with their hex grid here. I would have said, this is close enough. Like, this is, <laughs> this is not sufficiently far off. This is less than a hex off of what, like, my key is, what I've been working with so far. That's workable. However, Foundry doesn't have built-in hex labels right now. They don't have built-in grid labels at all. So that's another thing that's missing, that, like, technically that's a complaint I have, that, like, there's no way to put grid labels on, which is a big deal for hex-based games, a lot of them. Not a big deal for, like, square-based combat, obviously, but, like, anything, if you play Stars Without Number, if you play any kind of hex crawl, like, you're going to need labels. So, uh, so I had to export the image from Roll20 that had the labels I've been working with, put them in here, um, and get the grid as close as I could. And like what I ended up doing after literally two hours, sorry for repeating myself, people who have been here the whole time, after literally two hours of messing with the grid size, I made two guesses. I said this is probably about five pixels to the right, and this is probably about, it's like a little less than a third of the way through an 81 pixel uh, uh, grid. So like probably about 20 pixels off down in this corner. And I enter those, I hit enter, and <laughs> I just stretch my image, those like the 20 by 5 pixels, and it lines up like perfectly. So, so that's why. Thank you for listening, for coming to my TED talk on why hexes suck for computers. <laughs> if we we're all playing on tables, hexes would be fine. If you never have to move an image from one software to another, this would be fine. Hexes are fine. But like, they're not. They're not compatible, like, a hex from one program is not compatible with a hex from another program, and there's, like, I think you'd have to standardize hex measurements to make it a thing, and I don't know. I don't know. I, I, yep, I don't know. I don't know. So that's all I got. <laughs> Point being, I fixed it, and this is doable, but it took a lot of work to get these hexes to line up, even with, like, a, a tool designed to help with it. Like, I installed a mod to do it for me, basically, and it didn't, you know. I agree that all measurements should be standardized. Unfortunately, the smallest unit we have to work with in computers is a pixel, <laughs> and so it's not possible, not possible to standardize them in, like, image stuff, unless you're, like, working with vectors. Vectors are wonderful, but obviously doesn't work here. I don't know. That's, this is getting, that's getting far in the weeds. Point being, <laughs> point being, I'm glad I got this to work. 
nearly everything lines up. I have to like make some adjustments to these notes, like pixels of adjustments, <laughs> if we were gonna use this world map to like the stuff that already exists, but otherwise. <laughs> You're wonderful, but don't work here. <laughs> I'm confused. Is this a is this a command or an observation? Uh, I don't I don't follow. Um. No, you didn't miss a campaign recap because we didn't play last week. So I didn't actually do a recap this week, and I don't know if I'm going to do any actual prep. I thought about maybe like filling out some of these hexes ahead of uh, ahead of us, but eh, maybe not. We'll see. We'll see. Um, we might also go back to Path of Exile. It's true that I have a lot of hexes to fill out in front of us. I said it about vectors, I just... Oh. Yeah. Oh, I see. I understand. I'm sorry. Sorry the delay. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> They're just uh, not... A... Vectors aren't applicable in, the, in this situation. I do... I get really excited about vectors, though. Like... Having a 4K monitor, you start to really appreciate vector-based graphics. <laughs> you can tell when a program is made with vectors versus just background images that have been stretched in extra thousand pixels. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Took out a screw on the case and it stopped vibrating. Was like the screw loose or? Okay, I don't know, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you, Cam. You have gifted an amount of subs equal to my, like, almost equal to my current sub points. So I, I appreciate you and your generosity and support. Um, I don't think there's anything else to show off, really. Let's go. We can let's, uh, revisit the most important part of the entire software. Uh, oh yeah, it has like weather effects. I forgot I was gonna play with that a little bit. It's gonna play with that a little bit. You can set them on the like tile or on the on the scene you're in, so that's nice. Um, it has a this has like a bunch of added weather effects from a mod I have installed. <laughs> you can also like turn on. Oh my god, this is like this is so perfect but dumb at the same time. All right, hold on. First we'll just. Set an audio to play, like a playlist to play when you're in here. That's great. I'm not going to do it. You can set weather effects. Let's let's do crows. Let's have some crows flying around, shall we? I think I have to like, click out and click back in. The crows might be too... <laughs> crows might not work. Over <laughs> Travel.flack. I like that it detects that as a link. Um, okay. When checked, this scene will undergo a night cycle. I thought this was happening automatically. Also generate weather effects such as rain. Okay. Let's let's go into let's go into Tallow Town. Oh yeah, I forgot. We're playing with, playing with the uh, stuff, you know, templates for spells and stuff. Kind of neat. All right, so it's obviously like dark in here or whatever. Uh, let's see. It's already going to be. Let me just do. Um, oh, global illumination is on. What's going on then? Hmm. Hmm. Strange. There's some settings that appear to be conflicting to me. But uh, there's a clock down here. If we like set it, what do 
I set the weather? Is it a two polar? There's like some, uh... <clears throat> show me the sunny. Maybe your crowstorm mod is breaking your lighting. It's entirely possible. All right, now it is daytime. I've turned on the clock. You see that it is brightening up. <laughs> There's like an interaction, and this, this is what I was talking about. That's just like dumb and wild and great. When it's daytime, what's on a daytime filter? There's like an interaction between this, this uh, calendar mod and weather mod that I have and like the visual effects. So we have the fog, scattered clouds, but mostly clear, completely overcast with some snow flurry as possible. You have the snow, there's even fog added. You have both effects going on, that's kind of neat. If I skip it to midnight, it'll get dark again in a minute. It'll like fade out eventually. It takes some time for some of this to propagate, and I don't entirely know why, but uh, that is just the case. Like, I have to pause it again and then, like, continue it for it to turn to midnight. It's a little weird. Anyway. Snog, I see. <laughs> Now, of course, it is not getting dark, and I don't know why. This will take a little bit of time to figure out, <laughs> I think. Um, fog exploration, global illumination. Hmm. Still getting it all, still coming to understand when and how this stuff activates. I should definitely add it to that. Uh, this is this is very cool. Uh, it's supposed to have this kind of like real time. Oh yeah, it's, it's like it's supposed to kind of count the set seconds, but I don't know why. Um, that doesn't seem to be extremely accurate either. Also, I don't really care. It's kind of useless to me anyway. <laughs> kind of don't want that going on, but it's fine. Um, Go forward an hour. But yeah, I'm not sure why it uh, why it doesn't turn it dark. Though. But it's fine. This is all stuff I'll figure out as I as I actually use this or get really frustrated mid game. <laughs> Both are possible. But I can also just like take this, set it to night myself, and it's fine. Like, I, I still have full full control. I can overwrite everything. I believe. If I like turn this off and like set the weather effects for myself, I think it's fine. I say as the fog and the snow continue and the autumn leaves do not appear. So. Oh wait, oh, I forgot I. <laughs> what the? Oh, weird, okay. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. I still really like Roll20. Also, just an FYI, apparently if you use this like scrape and import tool that I used, it uh, might technically be against part of Roll20's like mod uh, TOS, like especially if you rip, um, if you rip something that isn't downloadable, basically. Like if you're, if you're pirating store assets, basically, that is not, technically allowed. So I would have to be I would have to be careful about that, especially streaming the games. If you're not streaming the games, it kind of doesn't matter. Also, it's still like supporting so I'll not be condoning piracy. I'm just pointing out a logical thing where like if you buy a bunch of roll 20 stuff and you use it to make maps, like you're still supporting roll 20 even if you're not actually using the software. So I don't know. Like, that still seems like a win for them, you know? <laughs> like, being the marketplace where people buy tiles and stuff doesn't seem like it would be the worst. Anyway, it's entirely possible that this whole illumination timeline thing just, like... 
I'm not, yeah, right. I'm not really worried about myself at the moment. No, I'm just letting people know that like, if you go use the software, technically, like not Foundry, but if you use the, <laughs> if you use the scrape and uh, convert tool, you might technically be breaking some rules. So don't, don't be a pirate. Be careful. Um, no. I thought the escape menu brought up something else. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> Obviously, all of this is true if, like, you know, if, uh, oh, this is the wrong one. Oh, this is kind of another cool thing, by the way. Like, as a player... Why is it brightening up? <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. Uh, that's fine. But as a player, like, you see the snow effects are here, moving around, whatever. Oh, yeah. After I move, it redraws. It's now nighttime. Whatever. Um, the player gets to move around between different maps. Like, they don't have to wait for the GM to drag them around. So that's neat. <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, so, you know, if they're like on, uh, if they're in here doing a fight or whatever, they like, or if it gets, if we take a break and we're on a fight screen, they can still go and they can look at the world map. They can go and they can look at the Eden districts or like any other, like I can put something more useful than the floating city and Arkstead, definitely Arkstead. I can put that like on the start, like I could put a reputation page or something here, something more useful. Um, and the players could look at that to see like where they stand with different NPCs, whatever. So there's more flexibility there in terms of the player getting to decide what they're looking at at any given, given time. Yes, correct. Like obviously I have a bunch more here. If I want them to be able to go look at the Brining's unit map, I can just go into configuration. Uh, there's an accessibility thing down here I can show it, like, I can allow all players to access it. Similarly, if there's stuff, like, I don't want to see up here, if there's stuff I'm done with, I can just take it, like, out. What's an example? I can take this. And I can, like, take it out of this navigation tab. Now it's gone. I would have to go and find it, like, in my compendium to put it, put it back up there. Uh, is it compendium? Now it's in the in the scenes section. So yeah, it's a lot cleaner that way. And also you just have scene folders, so that's a that's a one-up on roll 20 right there. I've been wanting that for forever. Um I forgot what it was. I don't care. It's fine. Everything's fine. So yeah. Can't be letting players have full access. <laughs> right, they aren't trustworthy. <laughs> Definitely. Here we can switch over to Brining's unit map, like I said. Move around. As a uh, Helios is not on this map, so get fucked, Helios. Yep. Alright, we can turn off the demo, I think. Oh wow, did you just replace Roll20 with Foundry? <laughs> Alright, I got it. That's fine. That's funny though. <laughs> the spooky noises were coming from the demo. Oh, I'm sorry. I can bring the noises back. And like I said, you can y'all can look at the demo if you want. Just on foundryvtt.com. Foundry kitties now. That's fair. That's fair. We can go to the edge here so we have some quiet music with the dripping <laughs> sewers. That, like, I don't know why this persists when I'm not on that map, but that's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Beta software. Beta demo. <laughs> Sounds like my house. <laughs> yeah, the vague, vague bard music and dripping water. Dad said we can't have Foundry, not even as a snack. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
We can, um... Let's see. I'm trying to think. <sighs> if we were, um... I don't know. It'll, it'll probably be a while before I can run a session in Foundry, but if we want to do, like, a one-shot or something, if we want to try it out sometime on, like, an off day, maybe we can do that? See if we want to, like, commit to moving. Because I don't want to just be, like, I don't want to flip the table and be like, we're playing with Foundry now. Um, you know, unacceptable full conversion. <laughs> Also want a little more time to like get rid of stuff I've, I've pirated and uh, anything that I can't actually download myself. Be a little, um, you know, be just real careful there. I'd like to try it maybe once uh, once I get more knowledge. Yeah, yeah. With like brand new, maybe simpler characters. It wouldn't be too hard to set up a session. It's just like, there's a lot of meta stuff for my campaign that I have uh, accessible in Roll20 that's not accessible here exactly. Like, macros don't work here. My rollable tables are not as smooth yet. I need to, I need a lot of ramp up time to get my, to get our campaign working on Foundry. Whereas like a new, you know, just rolling through a one shot isn't going to be as big of a problem. So some of this stuff does need to get updated. Like this calendar doesn't update until I hit until I pause it for some reason. So yeah, more uh, more updates on the mods will be good. But the cool fucking thing here, hold on. Let's fully convert the campaign into fetch. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> um, so let's go back to the main menu. Um, return to setup. You'll notice that this should pause the game. Maybe not. I guess it's still running in the background. I thought it would pause the... Oh yeah, you cannot access the fog data store before the game is ready. So you can like... You can access static maps that you already have access to. Like this stuff. But like... Uh, stuff running... Non-static maps need more. Like you need, the game needs to be fully running. So anyway... So I can go on to the add-on modules section here. Like, these are all the mods I have installed. And if I suspect that I need updates, I just hit the update all button, and they'll all go through and check, because they all have links to get... Ooh. Speaking of updates, <laughs> there was an update for FX Master and the Time One. What a coincidence. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder why it continually updates those. Module about time has been updated. It's at 0 0.1, 0 0.25. Still at the same. Okay, that's fine. Anyway, you can do the same with your game systems. I don't know why mine didn't come with D&D 5e. That's fine. Pathfinder 2 is at 0.512 uh, version. So I don't know what that means exactly, but... Uh, yeah, that could definitely explain why the time and the calendar mods were struggling. That wasn't how they were acting the other day, so. So. Just updated Pathfinder to 0.513. So, like, as more stuff comes out, as more beastery entries and more, like, items get added to the Pathfinder system, like, I just hit updates here and it adds them, so. So that's great. That's awesome. Let's go see if the if weather and time are functioning properly again. So that was like relatively painless to update. Calendar loaded, same time as before. Let's get Helios over here. So you can see both sides of the coin. It says the game is okay there. Yeah, that's fine. So let's like 
Let's try to advance an hour. Oh. That was 15 minutes. I missed the button. Let's advance an hour. It does update it in real time now. I can advance it to noon, or 7 a.m., 8, 9, 10, 11 a.m. That's a more appropriate wake-up time <laughs> for me. And it should update the lighting. It is still foggy and snowy. It doesn't look like it's updating the lighting, but maybe it's just slow. No, contrast is not changing. So let's pause it, zoom, see what happens. We'll leave it there a minute. We'll see. Um, this is, hold on, I should check if it's even, uh, oh, it's not turned on to the, yep, that would do it. Okay, so now it should lighten up, question mark. There we go. <laughs> Got it. It is now daytime. It is still snowing. So let's try to go into the weather. Light, moderate amount of snow today. Probably not with the fog. Let's get some... <laughs> Twitch chat. Let's get some Foundry Varus. We have Foundry at home. <laughs> I don't know if I follow. I'm sorry. Oh, I understand. Okay, I'm dumb. Sorry, Twitch chat is saying. Let's get some Foundry. Ferris, we have Foundry. <laughs> Foundry at home roleplaying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're unhappy with my generic brand virtual tabletop cereal. It's just... It's just... It's not even cheaper. I can't even say that. I want... Give me the scattered clouds, but mostly clear. Let's get out of polar. All right? We're in a volcano now. All right? The sun is completely obscured by ash. Possible ash fall today. I expect cinders. I don't see cinders. Or I expect fog. I don't know. It's not the... Whatever this is looking for is not hooked up. Or it's not looking for anything. Dark, smoky skies today. There's the smoke. That's neat. Give the moto what they want. I like that it's, like, automatically rolling. The cinders are coming. The volcano hasn't erupted yet. Fair. Large ash fall. That's snow, but I guess that's fine. Ah, smoky skies. It's obscured by ash. Ashen skies. Give me the cinders. No? Okay. Well, let's advance to midnight anyway. Let it be dark again. That's very satisfying. And the way this, like, fades into being a torch is very satisfying. This is wonderful. <laughs> and it's so nice that it, like, rolls the weather for me. Back to daytime. Ashen skies. I want the cinders. I know you have them. Artifacts master. Oh my god. There's some wild stuff. Okay. This wasn't working before. Because it needed to be updated. So like, let's just let's just turn on. You have, you have your top-down rain. You have parameters and tints. So like here's the rain. But I want I want it to be fucking raining, you know? I want it to be real good density. That's not actually a ton more impressive, but it's a little more dense, I guess. I guess. It's fine. And let's just speed, direction, scale, turn it all up. Why not? I love rain too. Okay, so I'm not impressed with some of these. <laughs> some of these parameters. This is perhaps not the correct one to show, but let's say, let's tint it. We want it to be raining cinders? Blood? I don't know. But it's an option. Once again, slightly disappointed with the tin here. <laughs> slightly. Slightly disappointed. I, pro I should have probably tested this a little bit. 
before before I was like, check this shit out. <laughs> I didn't turn it on. That was very smart. I set all the parameters, didn't turn on the checkbox. I just want to see if it like didn't update properly. Is that a dead horse? It is a dead horse. It's yeah. Yeah, it's a dead horse. Doesn't have to be. Um, did I mark it as dead in the combat tracker? I did. Get back into combat. You are not dead. You are alive. You are a live horse. And your initiative is uh, 17. Good job. Good horse. Good initiative. Okay, let's turn off. Let's turn off the top down right. Let's see if the fog is slightly nicer about being tinted blood red. It is not. <laughs> I am struggling with the tints. The tints are not tinting the way I would expect. That's dense as fuck, though. That is not medium density fog. Those are very blinky. Fog of War. Fog of, it has the same um, actual literal Fog of War as Roll20, by the way. I don't know if I can show that off. I can show it off. The demo has it. We have the demo up. Let's go to the old sewers, shall we? You can see that there's like this foggy outline here, very dark, of like the places this character has been. It looks like it ends right here. So we'll try to sneak on down to a place we haven't seen. And yeah, show it real, real time. And just make damn sure they have to reset this demo. <laughs> I wonder how often they like manually reset all the fog of war and stuff. They might have a script to do it every day or something. Um, lots of snake things. You can see them like popping into vision. Uh, so like down here, I think it's pretty fair to say, like you can't really see what's going on over here. You walk around the corner, bam, suddenly you see that, you walk back, you know that there's a circle there. So like kind of the Warcraft 2 fog of war system where like once you leave, you can still see vaguely what like you know just like memory help it's like oh yeah there's that hallway over here some people some people like this some people probably prefer the full black and like if you don't remember it your character doesn't remember it thing which not not to knock it sounded like i was mocking it um maybe a little but you know everyone plays everyone has their priorities <laughs> point being i think this is neat <laughs> okay back to the back to the factory I forgot what I was doing. I was trying to test fucking tinting of shit. And it's like not tinting the way I want it to. But it's fine. Switch this. Here are the autumn leaves. They're currently orange. Let us try one more time. One more time to make it blue. Different color. Let's keep it dark. Add to custom colors. Select this. Tint it. Do it. All right, so the tints clearly need a little work. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. The other thing you can do is just put a color filter on the map, just on the screen. You just do it. The screen is red. That one works. <laughs> so, you know, shit's, uh, getting weird. You can make shit get real weird. Real, real weird. And I love it. Uh, and then you just save it without a tint. <laughs> Turns back to normal. Also, there's this shit. This underwater filter. I think 
it's entirely possible that if I like turned this on for a session, I would actually get murdered by a player, because this is like nausea inducing. Ready? Oh wow, this is a lot slower! Oh my god, I say things and then it's like this is this is so much more mild. This is so much more mild than the other one. Oh my god. Alright, this is what happens when you like It's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. It's still a little warbly. Still a little warbly. But I was like checking it out. I would turn it on on the world map and it was just full on like I ooh, it was bad. It's still pretty bad on the world map. <laughs> you need this for even the paddle. <laughs> Can't see it really? The warble? It's pretty it's I guess it's yeah, it's like pretty actually subtle now. Before it was like tearing the whole screen, but this is like the easiest place to see it, right? Fucking hate. Let's let's zoom out. Look at that. Look at the warble over here. If you're zoomed all the way out, you can really tell. Maybe? I don't know. Look, the edge of it, you can see this is not a square anymore. There are interruptions. Promise it was a lot worse. Also, it didn't used to affect tokens? So that's interesting that that's happening. It is both more subtle. Oh, wow, it just blinked. That's not going to be okay. <laughs> if it's just like... One, it's warbling and already kind of, like, messed up. And then sometimes it just blinks and stops and, like, starts again in a different parameter. But yeah, this token is, like, also getting distorted, which wasn't happening before. All right. So those are the, those are the various, those are the effects. Um, I lost it. I lost the one we're looking at. I did, I did. Oh, it's got Helios marking it, that's fine. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's a whole lot. Oh, this I can, I can uninstall that one. I can turn it off anyway. It's like the wall controls we mentioned. I can show off like, I don't know. If I, how do I do this? If I like do this, it's like anywhere outside Anywhere in the, like, you can see it as lines of sight, this, like, blue area. This is how you set up just, like, an area with a, with a song. Now I want global. Volume is fine. Sound radius, 88. Volume easing. I have to select a song, unfortunately. Audio. Let's do this one. It's so like presumably. Can't tell which song is which. Okay. Whoops. Whoops. It isn't actually playing the song. Let's reload on the player side. Let's see. It might not like automatically load when you uh, when you're already in the game. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Does not appear to be working. Uh, hmm. Oops. Let's move Helios. Let's set the active map to the world. And 
then we can set the active map to Tallow Town, see what happens there. Hmm. Okay, interesting. <clears throat> so I will again have to play with that a bit. It is pretty cute. I can't claim any credit for it. This is like from a D&D adventure. <laughs> Straight up. Hmm. I don't see anything in here blocking the audio from happening. that you wouldn't have known, but, like, I don't know. They all, like, it would be pretty easy to pick out if anyone's run, like, anyone's used one of these on Roll20, because it, all the pre-made D&D adventures follow the same, like, it's got the adventure names down here, for one, <laughs> and, uh, like, follows the same format of there's, like, a scroll where all of your extra units are and stuff, and then, like, the very same, like, numbers here. It's a very, like, Adventurer's Guild, uh, like, art style, I think. So. On the other hand, I just like to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it's not playing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was unnecessary. Uh, let's... What sound is this? This is... Legend of Mana, Hometown, Domina. Um, travel, right? Huh. So the song works. I know the sound in the map work, though. Hmm. Let's just try this. Like, oh, no, not that. <laughs> not that core data. I guess that's uh, not what I'm looking for. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really have a guess. I guess it's fine. Well, let's pick, uh, pick a different one. See. Do I really have three versions of blue fields? I sure do. Sure do. Stop saying I don't know eventually. Let's close this. Maybe this is some kind of a... Uh, and then we'll reload again. <laughs> Please don't let stop saying I don't know. <laughs> I wonder if it's because... I don't know. Like, token ownership is kind of weird right now because it's just using like the imported settings so i don't necessarily know that this token is like considered helios i don't know if that makes any sense to anyone else <laughs> wow fucked up that they have the grid sizing tool i need to just let me just go on install that shall we shall we why not Um, turn off the grid tool. What else? Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess not. I guess I can't. It, I think you're right, basically. <laughs> Everything else can stay. 
yeah. Seems like the music areas are... At least with my imported stuff, a little tricky. But we've seen how they work in the demo, and I presume that is how they will also actually work when I do get it figured out. <laughs> yeah, because, like, I don't think this token is Helios. I think they're just... So I can't open Helios as like a character sheet. Like, clearly. Clearly this isn't hooked up like it's supposed to be. So I think that's probably relevant here. Alright, dragging this out. <laughs> dragging this out here sure didn't. You do not own any tokens with vision in this section. Okay. As I was saying, it sure doesn't seem like this is all hooked up quite like it's supposed to be. But it's sure working now, I don't know. <laughs> that was weird. We're getting there. When I like opened the token settings, it seemed to, all right, whatever. Whatever. The question, part of the question is, this is playing for me and not, not actually Helios. Like this isn't playing in my browser. This is playing for me as the DM because a player is inside of the area. Weird. I mean, that makes sense. I'm just saying it's still not playing for Helios. <laughs> like actor data, it's playing. Uh, vision, has vision. 90 units of dim vision. Or whatever. Emit dim. 90. Emit bright. 30? 30? I don't know, but... <laughs> okay. So now Helios can pop in and out of here. Okay, so now it stops playing for me. It's definitely playing in my software and not in the browser. <laughs> That's funny. So, presumably still kind of a token permission thing. Something weird like that. Let's move out and back in. I want to hear double. I want to hear double. I want to know. I'm gonna go with weird permission things because like I move it and I hear it very temporarily and then it stops. <laughs> That's funny. So Helios just has to... A little glitchy, a little bit glitchy. <laughs> okay, so that didn't stop the music this time. Run away, run away, Helios. Okay, so I'm gonna go with token permissions are a little weird, and the music distancing is a little bit buggy, especially when token permissions are weird. Oh, I can stop the music. I can't, I just can't run away from the music. The music is just for, uh, here, I'll, I'll show it off. The music is set to be happening. What the? 
okay. I'm starting to get it. And it has to do with this window being active. Like the GM's window has to be active, I think. That's weird. Anyway, the sound is right here. And so it's supposed to be emitting to like, you know, he's supposed to still be in the range. Supposed to be emitting like through here. Anywhere where it's not blocked by walls. So if I like go around this corner, it's supposed to kind of be blocked. Right? So, anyway, there's some weird interactions <laughs> based on, like, this updating. So I guess this feature isn't, like, perfectly implemented yet, but I don't know. Still cool. Still cool. Works better in the demo, I would say, than in here. Um, but the demo could be on a newer version than I am, because I'm on, like, a... I'm not on the newest version. I'm not on the newest build. Um, like, a few versions behind. So...